Welcome back folks, 16th of April and I'm finally getting around to planting up the potatoes. I know most of you might think that's a bit late, so we've been in four or five weeks, even longer, but to be fair, we've had the really bad rains over the last few weeks. In fact, we had a good deluge last night, but the sun's appearing, so hopefully we're in for a decent day. Um, really, the rain hasn't affected me regarding the potatoes, because I grow mine, as you probably were, in these 30 litre. And uh, I'll be doing something slightly different this year. I've given the first earlies a complete miss, none of them. Going straight in with the second earlies and the Charlotte, and I'll be doing 16 buckets of these. Um, what I will do is a little trial as well. I've split the Charlottes up into two groups. And the first lot, you probably saw two or three videos ago, actually treated the tubers with the Andermatt spray, the inoculant. And I've just got another drop left in there now, and I'll be doing the last lot, last spray there before these get planted up. And what I'll do, I'll mark the buckets up in separate tags so I know which has been treated and which hasn't. The only other thing, you see uh, compost mix. I always had a few handfuls of this. This is 6x fibrous manure. And the other thing I had, I had a few grains of pelleted potato fertiliser as well. So I'm going to carry on planting now, I'm not going to bore you with that, a lot of other videos on YouTube, but to have a look in detail how I sell mine, I'll put a little link up here, and also there'll be a QR code, so if you want to stop the video and take a photo with your phone camera, the link will send you directly to the video, okay, bring you back in a minute. That's the first 16 done, all, all Charlotte. The first two rows of four are the ones that have been treated with the Andermatt spray, and these four are just the normal planted ones. I've got another two rows of four here. These will be the blight resistant main crop. The first row I'm going to do is my old favourites, the Sao Palmyra, and the next row of the front is a new variety for me. It's one called Java and it's a cross between Vala and something else, I can't remember. But uh, they'll be planted exactly the same. You can, of course, sow directly in the ground, but uh, I'll give that up three or four years ago because I was fed up of spearing the big prize potatoes. But uh, if you want to have a look how I did them a few years ago, I'll put, again, I'll put another link up the corner here and stop the video, and there'll be a QR code as well. You can photograph that, and that'll take you also to the website. See you in a minute. Well, that's it. 24 containers all done. I've just actually watered them in. The normal plan is to use the house pipe and give them a good drenching, but the council, in the wisdom, have not put the supply onto the site yet, so I've had to use a watering can. And each one's had about five litres each. Those at the front was particularly dry, but I think they've actually had a good soak in there. There's just one more job that I need to do, and that's actually put a layer, two or three inches layer of straw on the top. And that not only keeps the weeds down, but it stops evaporation as well. I usually get that from the pet shop. I don't like using hay because I've had grass come up, but the uh, straw seems to do the trick. Right, as I said, it's raining now. I'm going to go in and have a nice warm drink. One thing I've noticed this year on YouTube is there's an awful lot of growers complaining of poor germination and no, I'm no exception to that. The nemesis for me has been the spring onion. In total, I think I've sown at least three, possibly four, multi-cell trays and the grand result has been two or three plugs that have popped up that, you know, they're really good enough. I've tried different seed manufacturers to eliminate in case there's a bad batch, but even so, the results have been coming out the same. The only thing in common that I've used on all of them is that I've been sown in peat-free compost. Now, I'm not against the peat ban, but the thing what annoys me and the thing is, is wrong is the way it's been introduced at a rapid rate. And the consequence of that is some of the compost companies are producing the compost totally unacceptable with loads of rubbish in and we're paying the price for that. It had possibly been better if they'd have put a reduced peat for a few years and then try and aim for the peat free. But to go 
at a such short notice. And really, we don't know if that's still going to happen again. We say I spoke to a few compost companies and they're not 100% that the ban's going to take place at the end of 24. Anyway, what I've done, I've reverted back to a peat-based compost. This is the Clover multi-purpose. And I've run this through a sieve. Must say, I haven't got much rubbish out of it. It's quite good. Produced another 10 cell tray. I'm going to do another batch sowing. So we'll keep an eye on this and I'll keep you posted. Got a couple of trays of lettuce here that are in desperation to get out. This one's here, the oak leaf type called Navara. And this one here is Lolo Rosso. I'm going to put a row of each down the outsides of the veggie pod and I'll probably find somewhere and start dotting these around in some of the beds. When I first saw the lettuce, nothing seemed to happen. The germination was very, very slow. So I decided to sow another tray. And lo and behold, the both shot up together. Now I've got to try and find space for 48 lettuce. But, uh, having too many is better than none at all. Right, I'm going to have a go at potting on the beans. These are the French beans. And I must say, they have chitted much quicker then they run the beans. I don't know if you can see those there. Some got some nice shoots coming out. So I'm going to be planting these in these uh, Westlands busy roots. And I've got two varieties here. There's my usual one Ferrari and the one Faraday that I had from Steve. So I'll probably do about 12, 16 of each. When filling these root trainer type cells, I like to just put a bit of compost in, give it a tap to try and get rid of any air pockets and just keep topping it up like that. So that's the French beans done. In the end I did five books of Ferrari and three of the Faraday because I'd run out more or less of the Faraday ones which had germinated but nonetheless what I'm going to do now is give these a water to settle the compost in the top and I've got a little plastic propagator lid I'm going to pop over and I'm going to take these down to the allotment greenhouse. Just having a closer look at these runner beans I think they are ready actually to be potted on. I only need 24 of these so I'll probably do 32 again and pick the best out. I think it's about time to get these shallots out, long last. I think these was planted around about mid-November and quite a lot of them have already split. It's a mixture of uh, Red Sun and Hattiv de Nord. A day or two ago I actually give the onion beds, one of them, a top dressing with super phosphates. This is something I do every year and I got that from the Robinsons, the home of the big onion. You go on their website they tell you how they prepare their soil to grow the onions and that. And that's one of the procedures they do, is a top dressing just before planting out a super phosphate. And I likely raked it in with the wolf tiller. And now I'm going to be putting these in. I'll get my marking board out because I know these are going 12 in a row. Makes it much easier for planting. And I think I've got around about 40 in total. Anyway, get back onto the allotment. This is the planting board if you haven't seen it and because I use standard size beds this makes the spacing so much easier. I've got a video again if you want to have a look take a look at this little QR card and the link up the side. Right let's get planting. <laughs> things I forgot to mention all when I'm planting out. First of all, I mean I could have used the bulb planter, I'm just using a normal trowel. I just remove 
the dead leaves here which have gone past the best. And once I've done that then I'll give the roots a dusting, as you can see, a good root ball on there, a good dusting with mycorrhizal and try and plant the bulb more or less the same depth as it has been in the pot. Get down a bit deeper. That looks okay. Just fill it and give it a, a firming and we're done. I'm just giving them the final water in there. In the end I put three rows of 12. So I had about four to five stragglers which were worth creating part of a row. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up but I've lashed up a little framework over the top and what I want to do is get a bit of uh, environment or something over the top because you can guarantee as soon as we have any warm weather the allium leaf mine will come and give these bombing. <laughs> okay that's about it for this one see you in the next one bye for now. <laughs>